What's up, buddy? How you doing? Say mother fire? All right, so this is gonna be a little more boring than some of the other videos. Um, and this one's just sorting out the electronics and the rat nests of wires that came with this. Uh, I can show you the gauge clusters, all that good stuff. Um, what we're kind of planning on doing with it. I'll show you some of the sensors on the jet that exist and then some of this wiring and harnesses that we need to sort through uh, to really get everything hooked back up to be able to start the jet. So important stuff like, uh, you know, we got to make sure we have oil pressure, got to monitor exhaust gas temp, we have an RPM gauge so we know if this thing's going to idle or if it's going to launch into the next neighborhood next to us or something or whatever. So um, I'll take you through that process and uh, share some info, things that we've learned, things that we need to learn, and uh, we'll really go from there. So let's get into it. We've gotten to the point where we get to dig into the fun part of this project and uh, that's to figure out the wire harnesses and the existing wiring and gauge clusters that came with this thing because we have it able to roll over now but it'll be important to know oil temperature, exhaust gas temperature, RPM, um, you know all the things that are critical to get this thing running but keep it running safely. Uh, so we're kind of at that point so we'll dig into it a little bit right now and see where we get. Um, I think a lot of the components are here and a lot of the original uh, sensors on the engine are still on it. So if we sort through this rat's nest, we should be able to get most of it pieced together. Then it's just a matter of uh, tying up any loose ends, getting it connected, test some of the sensors, make sure they still actually work, and then maybe clean this thing up a little bit. Um, the long-term goal is to replace a lot of these old sensors, the old thermocouples, uh, pressure sensors, transducers, uh, to change all that stuff out with a modern computer-controlled system that we can program and design ourselves. Um, that way we can still monitor all those situations, but you can have some automation in the process so that you're not relying on me to look at the gauge to say, hey, this is over temp, we got to shut it down, or we haven't started in a certain amount of time that something might be wrong with fuel or oil pressure, any of those type things like a check engine light in your car would have. So we'll do some basic stuff on our own. Uh, to help automate some of those things. And the big thing that this jet needs is a fuel system. Um, it doesn't have one right now. We'll probably just try to gravity feed it to get it to start. Um, but we'll need a small tank with a few, uh, fuel pressure um, unit in there and then a regulator that's variable so, so we can monitor RPM and uh, all the other sensors including RPM and then be able to ramp in fuel to get this thing to spool up and spool down uh, in an efficient manner. So we can probably optimize some of this stuff. If I look at the old fuel schematics on these things, they're a nightmare. It looks like it's meant to adjust things for altitude. Um, you know, planes going up in the air, that doesn't apply to us anymore. Um, you know, temperature controlled things, uh, bypass valves, a whole bunch of stuff that really is surprising that they made it work back in like the 30s and 40s when they designed that stuff, but they didn't have much for uh, you know computers and that kind of resource then so things should be much easier but let's take a look at the cluster and this is what we have to work with so it's old it's not real pretty um but it looks like we have a hydraulic pressure gauge it looks like there's a fitting here and there's a spot on the existing hydraulic pump that we put this that we can plug our gauge in so we'll know the pressure on the APU side of things um, versus the line pressure. So we know how much pressure we're putting into it to start, but also how much it's generating on its own if we used uh, the hydraulic for anything else, like um, run some other cylinders or anything else on this project. Um, we've got this kind of half busted up. I was told this works still. Um, kind of questioning it. It's not in the best shape. These gauges are pretty sensitive to being absolutely just destroyed. So we'll see. Uh, this is the pyrometer, but basically it's our exhaust gas temperatures. Um, on this engine, there's a handful of uh, thermocouples, and then we can test those with our meter to make sure that they're working properly. But there's a bunch of thermocouples on the back of the exhaust uh, combustion chamber um that are wired up so those will just need to make their way back to this sensor we've got a percent rpm if i'm not mistaken there's a tachometer on the front of the gearbox on the auxiliary power unit uh, just a two-wire sensor 
we should be able to hook that back up also and have RPM. Uh, we'll have an oil pressure gauge. That one's pretty straightforward. There's uh, already a fitting on the oil system, so we can hook this up to the back of this unit. They kind of have like a weird hokey, like emergency stop, but not really emergency stop. Like usually you don't cover your emergency stop with a piece of metal that you can't press in an emergency, but so that will figure out something else kind of relevant. There's just a power light and an oil pressure light on here. So they must have something in here to say without looking at this gauge, uh, you know, that we have sufficient oil pressure. Um, so that kind of covers this main jet engine panel. It also comes attached to this little box, which is quite a creature on its own. So we have a pyro alarm. Uh, we've got a little terminal strip. We've got a rat's nest of wires. Um, looks like there's a solenoid in here. And then on the front of this cover, we've got an over temp power and some illegible other paper tag but i think the gist of this is this it monitors for the exhaust got temperatures for over temperature probably automatically cuts the ignition circuit with one of these solenoids not exactly sure what's going on inside our pyro alarm um, but we can get that sorted out and then on the back side of these guys you'll see a lot of our connections for oil pressure hydraulic pressure uh, we've got some of the lines here. Um, the light bulb for one of the alarms. I don't know. Um, so there's a bit of a rat's nest here. And then you sort through some of this other rat's nest and you end up making your way to this little button, which should be the igniter. So you'll get it up to speed. You'll give it fuel. We'll hit the igniter, it should start, and then you can regulate RPM with the fuel control. So that's the bulk of this uh, pile of wires. You know, as an electrical engineer, this stuff's kind of fun to work on, but also sorting through somebody else's disaster is pretty miserable anyway, so um, we'll just get it done, get through it. And then, like I said, long term, we're just gonna replace all these antiquated sensors with new modern equipment, we'll probably have a single display readout that has all these variables, the exhaust gas, temp oil pressure, hydraulic pressure, all those things with one digital readout. That'll make things in life a lot easier. You know, we could also automate the starting system, right? So instead of having me wait for good oil pressure, wait for, uh, you know, RPM to get to the right thing, make sure we got good hydraulic pressure, then press the starter. You know, there's a lot of manual factors here. And if we can find a, a, a happy place that this engine likes to start, run, RPM, temperature, it should be quite easy to make a control system um, that sort of automates that stuff the best that we can. So that'll be a whole nother adventure on its own. I do want to get this thing started and running first to make sure that everything checks out with these original clusters and make sure it runs um, before I start really digging in and, and kind of taking things to a level that um you know requires some more testing and trial and error that kind of stuff so that's what we have for now um i do have one thing that's on the jet uh that is the igniter and the spark plug um so we'll leave that stuff in place too we'll have to make the harness from here with these components to run those devices and we'll make like one clean little control box uh, just a, like a test stand, just to run this. All right, we're back over with the jet. So let's walk through the sensors and uh, fittings and some of that stuff that we can see right now. We'll figure out how hook, hook them up to that gauge cluster I showed you earlier. And um, we'll start the back here. We've got a set of thermocouples um, that will measure the exhaust gas temperature. We'll look in the manual, figure out what type of thermocouples these are and how they're wired. We'll be able to test all of these uh, the circuit to make sure that these still work so we get the accurate exhaust gas temperature reading So you can see the thermocouples here. There's uh, they're on these probes um, All the way around the exhaust tip here to read the inlet temperature And then this diagram here shows our thermocouple wiring um, it looks like they're all in series from this diagram um, and it gives you resistance at uh, certain temperatures so you can kind of calibrate it 
uh, but should get us in the right ballpark. Um, let's walk around to this side. Um, we do have a fitting to add on our hydraulic system to know how much hydraulic pressure to go to that hydraulic pressure gauge. So we know how much pressure is in the system when we're starting it and also how much is in it when it's running. If we look at the front of the engine, we've got our auxiliary power unit down here. And I believe this is a wire for a tachometer. There must be a small gearbox in here and this will go out to our gauge cluster to give us engine RPM, which is pretty important. Uh, we'll climb to this side. And this fitting right here runs out to this line, out to just an open end right now. So this is our oil pressure line that'll hook to our back of our oil pressure gauge, um, which is pretty important to make sure that those bearings are lubricated when we start turning this over. Uh, since we're over here, we've got some beautiful wiring boxes here. This looks like just a junction box with the terminal strip in it to make some of the connections from the motor to the other box that we saw in the garage. On this side, we have our ignition system. There's a small transformer here. Uh, with that transformer, we got our incoming wiring and then we have kind of a spark plug boot. And this goes out to, where are you at? To the igniter, which is kind of tucked up in here. So it straight up is just a spark plug wire with a boot going into the exhaust combustion chamber there. Um, so I feel like that probably covers most of the electronics on this. The exception is the fuel pump. We're going to have to put our own tank fuel pump on it, um, put our own regulator and control the fuel. To start it, we'll just gravity feed it. we got a manual valve. It, it won't respond real great, but it'll allow us to start it and maybe ramp up RPM a little bit slowly. Um, so that's the plan. So we'll see how far we get. I'll have all this stuff hooked up in the next video. And uh, maybe I'll do a quick video on hooking up the rest of the oil tank and those fittings. And then the next one you should see is us giving this thing the beans, firing it up, throwing fuel and ignition at it, and see what happens from there. So it'll start to get pretty exciting. So thanks for following along. I uh, hope you liked the videos. I uh, kind of enjoyed documenting this project and learning a lot along the way. Um, you know, this is 1930s, 40s technology. Uh, found an old manual. I'll share some clips uh, in this video about some of the things we found in there that helped us along the way. Um, but things are going well so far, so hopefully they stay going well, fingers crossed. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around.